Seabird 198, one local address established, send all Hello everybody, welcome again on this uh, second day. I am Chesney, your second officer again for today. As you can see, there was a small change in schedule. We were supposed to fly with uh, my colleague Nikki today, but as she has been diverted uh, yesterday evening, uh, we had to make a change of plans as she was running out of flight duty time period. So, uh, of course, we need a certain amount of rest time before we can start the next day. And uh, because she was not able to have a required rest to start this flight, we changed and I'm doing this flight with you, but I'm sure we will see her on another day. Right now, um, we have just changed another airplane, um, so we are ready to start our walk around and I would like to invite you to have a look at, um, at our walk around. I will explain you every little detail we, uh, we have a look at. So first of all, we start at the uh, nose section. Over here, you can see the external power panel. So. The first thing we check is uh, this is the external power coming inside the airplane. So we can see external power is not in use as we have started our APU for today uh, because we need some air conditioning as the temperature in the cabin is quite hot. But we can see external power is available. So whenever we need it, we can use the external. We are switching on the uh, nose gear and the main gear well lights so we can look if the lights are working. And for the rest, all the circuit breakers are okay and no uh, visible damage is uh, occurred. A little bit more to the left. We have the angle of attack vane. We just check the general condition and everything seems to be fine. As well, we have a quick look at the landing gear, um, at the wheels, at the tires, that nothing is uh, missing from this side, uh, no damage. Now we have to go back quite a bit. We can check the nose cone and on top we can see the uh, three probes. We have to see that the probes are there and there is no obstruction inside the probe, which can accept the uh, safety of the flight. And as well, we check for uh, bird strikes or any uh, other damage. Yes. Excuse me. When you ask to pressurize the implant in the OK, I'll spend a second now. So the captain wants us to check the hydraulics, so the area is clear. We just give a knock. And this is the all clear, so we can have a look at hydraulics. Uh, basically, what we give the thumbs up for is to check that there is nobody in the area of the flaps and the slats. Because if we start to pressurize the uh, hydraulic systems, we don't want anybody's fingers to be in the slat uh, mechanism. Um, so we continue our walk around. Uh, now we have um, a more detailed look at uh, nose gear. So again, we check the tires. We check the strut compression, which looks fine to me. No damage occurs, and inside we as well have to look for the for the gear pins and if the wheel well lights are working. So this is all fine for me. Uh, the doors are okay, and this is it. And the outside is fine. This is the Ram Air tur Turbine Probe, the Ram Air Temperature Probe. So this one is good. Um, no obstructions because sometimes it might happen some little animals like to build a nest inside. This side as well, the angle of attack vane, everything is fine. This little thing here is the blowout disc for the oxygen pressure for the, um, for the cockpit. If this is green, it means everything is okay. In case this would be uh, broken, it means there is an overpressure um, in the cockpit uh, oxygen supply system. So here we just have a look at if all the, all the things which are there are okay, the VHF antennas and, and uh, the back side of the uh, wheels. Just having a look at the static ports. Everything is okay, no obstructions. And then we check the inside of the cargo hold. We will check on the lights, that all the lights are working, as this is a mandatory check in case we have an inspection. So everything seems to be fine. This cargo hold is empty as we normally start loading baggage in the aft compartment as they are doing now. Uh, all the lights are working. This is the uh, wing light, the wing nacelle to check if you have any icing. And over here, this inlet is the, um, the brake cooling inlet. As the brakes get quite hot after takeoff, 
we need this one to be cleared. Same here, the main landing gear. What we check here is the uh, standard condition of the tires. These tires seem to be very new, nice new tires. All the cables are good, no hydraulic uh, leakage. Over here we have the brake wear pins. These are more than enough. Only when the brake pins are flush, that means we have to reinstall new brakes as they are worn out. Strut compression is fine. And then we go up. This uh, little hole is where they would install the uh, gear pins in case you have uh, maintenance actions. In order not to, to block the gear, not to be operating, they would install the pin here. So the pin is out, which is perfect for a flight. We have a quick look here. The main gear well lights are working. So we continue uh, with the rest of the flight. And on our left hand side, we have the uh, fueling agents. Grazie. Prego. Grazie, buon lavoro, ciao. So uh, we have just refueled the airplane. This is the fuel receipt, so we can uh, send the uh, amount of fuel we've taken today to operations. Uh, the leading edge of the wing is fine. Uh, no sign of bird strikes or whatever. The refueling panels are fine. We just have a look inside. If everything is okay. So this is the refueling panel. In this part here, they would attach the actual refueling hose where the fuel goes inside. And these are the refueling valves, which are open to send fuel to the right main tank, the left main tank, and the center wing tank. So this looks good. We have a panel more to the left of this. Just close these ones. And this is the panel where we actually set the uh, values. So, this here is how we operate the fueling valve. Normally we just power up the refueling panel. We can open the center tanks, or the right main tank, or left main tank. We would set the quantity here using this system, and we would always be using it automatic, as the airplane knows how many fuel uh, there is required. We set 5,000 required for whatever, and the airplane will be balancing the fuel equally in both tanks. As well, one of the mandatory checks is uh, to see if all the uh, placards are installed. This is the fuel tank vent. We check this for uh, no obstructions. This is where if you would have an excess of fuel, the excess of fuel would spray out to this side. Of course. The moment the fuel sprays out on this side is because um, there is something wrong. There is too much fuel um, or whatever. Check the navigation lights, which are working. Static dischargers, all intact. And just the general condition of the trailing edge of the uh, flaps and the wing. And now we are back at the main gear. Still the same, check the condition, the lines are okay, the brake wear pens are checked, and this is the brake accumulator. In case we lose hydraulic pressure, we still have some uh, accumulated pressure inside to, to use the brakes on landing, even without the hydraulic systems working. So now if we turn to the left, they are loading the uh, luggage in the aft cargo hold. So now we can check the uh, inlet of the engine. The fan blades seem to be turning perfectly. The, uh, the probes are fine, no obstructions, the nacelles are clear, so I am happy with this. So the rest of the engine we just will check if all the uh, panels are closed and secured. It's a bit noisy as the APU is running, but still we check if all the drain tubes are here. We check if no uh, damage has occurred due to tail strike. And then we go back to check the horizontal and vertical stabilizer. So 
So we will have a look at the static wax hour as well uh, there. And then we will basically do the same on the left side of the airplane as we did on the right side as well. Checking just right, be, right above the engine. You can see some uh, inlets. This is the APU air inlet, which is open. And uh, that's everything is fine. This is uh, one of the emergency exits. In case we need it, we can um, jettison the tail cone and the passengers could use an emergency slide to go out in case uh, evacuation is needed. This is one of the ways to use the emergency exit from the outside. Here we have the outflow valve, which is open. The outflow valve is uh, Okay, and inside we just have a look if all the tubes are okay. Same here, checking the engine condition, checking the thrust reversers, everything is fine. All the latches are closed, all the panels are closed, and this is how it should be because this is very important to check in case there have been maintenance works or something in case somebody forgets to close one of the latches um, it's very important to check that everything is closed we don't want to take off it and uh, with cowling open or something so brand new tires wonderful Uh, these things here are the uh, tracks for the flaps. Inside there is a mechanism for the, flaps to, for the flaps to deploy. So basically if the flaps would be deploying, it would go down like this. And inside is a track mechanism um, to push the flaps down. Again, static dischargers. Lights are working. This is uh, the main landing light. At the moment, the main landing light is retracted. In case we will be using the landing light for takeoff and landing, this light will be coming out like this at a 90 degrees angle, and then we can use the landing light. A nice feature about this landing light is that in case we need to uh, reduce some speed, we could uh, deploy the landing lights as a means of uh, a mini speed brake, so it will create a little bit of extra drag, so it's very, very useful to reduce the speed even more in conjunction with the uh, speed brakes. So here you can perfectly see the difference between new brakes and uh, used brakes. At the right side, this is a brake which has been used a little bit more. You can see the pin is a lot shorter than the new brake pin on the left-hand side, which is a lot longer. And as well on this side, we have the uh, brake cooling inlet. So uh, after takeoff or after landing, whenever it's required to, to, to cool the brakes, uh, we have some air going inside the, uh, the, the main wheel well compartment to, to cool down the, uh, the gear. This is our portable water access uh, panel. If we open this, we can have a look how everything is going. This is the portable water, it's what we use to, to well, where the water is coming from to make the coffee. So we would just switch on this panel and we can see the water tank level is uh, three quarters full. We need half a quarter is considered full in our company. And in case we are below uh, half, uh, we would refill this panel at uh, night at the last flight of the day. Nicely closed. Static ports again. These are the pressure relief static ports. And these are the pressure relief valves. We have two of them in case we would have an overpressure in the cabin. Uh, if the outflow valve is blocked for any reason, this is the emergency valve. They would open to relieve the pressure from the cabin, not to have an overpressure uh, on the airplane and not to overstress the uh, structure. 
And these are the ground floodlights, which we are using for landing and for taxiing to have a nice angle. What we check here is the Venturi outlet. Uh, we have a uh, fan which is cooling the instruments inside the cockpit. And in case the uh, electrical fan would be um, out of service in flight, this suction effect uh, would make sure there is still some cooling inside the um, instrument panels. So we won't be overheating the instrument panels. This is only working um, in flight as we need airflow to, to create a suction. Uh, then we will go back to the front of the airplane. We will switch off the wheel well lights after we have checked everything. We complete our walk around. We will go back inside the cockpit, send the fuel to the company and continue with the cockpit preparation. Uh, thank you for your attention and I will see you back upstairs. Four right identify uh, intersection Bravo. I'm reading 10 feet. Uh, zero four right uh, identify checked and I'm reading 20 feet. Uh, cabin crew prepare for departure. So before takeoff check, there's TAD. Check. Checked. Camera out screen announcement complete. Landing steer lights on. Radar on. Transponder DARA before takeoff check is complete. Line up and wait. Zero four right. Line up and wait. Thank you. Six four. 
Ouais, ils allaient sortir. Ouais, t'as vu. Easy six seven Lima Tango, nine or my store and tower one two zero decimal two ciao. What is the decimal two easy six seven tango bye bye? So we'll turn the right. Uh, the wind is coming from the right. So let's go uh, on heading 190 and cross the weather and go back to the route. Maybe after the weather we can ask a request direct Sorrento or something. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And as well, we are deviating yeah, to the right. Yeah. Roma radar 134 decimal. Buongiorno, Bologna 1264, level 330, heading 190 to avoid weather. Bologna 1264, reverse front at uh, one able flight to Amano. To Amano one able, uh, Bologna 1264. Nav 1 to Amano. Check. Mediana 243, contact Napoli 1435. 2435, show. Bologna 1264, proceeding to Amano. Roger, thank you. Break, Meridiana 372, the same for level uh, 320. Are you ready for the briefing? I am ready, ready. Okay, uh, Chesney, so you have control and communications. Control I can start the uh, briefing to Catania. Okay, so the status of the European is clean. Uh, there's nothing on a technical logbook affecting the flight or the, uh, the approach and landing uh, today at Catania. Nice weather conditions today. Uh, no notams uh, for the uh, airport and the weather conditions. We already reviewed it together. Uh, Cabo K, runway news, uh, runway 08. Okay. So uh, we don't expect to use, of course, the uh, anti-ice or the weather radar during descent. So I will use the terrain on my side. You can use either terrain or weather on your side. Yeah, I will uh, switch to terrain as well. Okay, so perfect. So weather radar, let's put yeah, it off for right. a while. We'll do an ILS approach. Uh, so we'll do it uh, with probably with vectors. Uh, we can do it either with vectors or maybe they will ask us to compete the... Uh, the full arc approach. In any case, uh, once we are clear for the approach, uh, we will arm the approach uh, plan button. I uh, will have the localizer arm here. Once we have the localizer arm, we will select, pre-select the missile approach heading. Okay? Perfect. So for the arrival, uh, we expect the Koba arrival, Koba 1 Foxtrot. The, uh, the star is on page 610. 16 December 2010. And uh, it says that after Copa, at 23 miles, we should start uh, a right turn to intercept and follow a 
12, uh, 21 DME arc uh, from Catania uh, until uh, we intercept the uh, basically the localizer after Nasom. Okay, so the arrival links us to the uh, ILS approach Sulu runway 08. On the arrival, we'll see the high terrain left side of our approach. So we will have a very nice uh, view of probably of the volcano there. And uh, and then we'll turn the right to the uh, lower terrain uh, of the approach. For the ILS, uh, we are expecting the ILS Sulu runway 08, page 7, 10, 18, July 2013. The uh, frequency is uh, Charlie Tango November 109.9. The ILS Sulu. Uh, we require a VUR on the approach. And after NASOM, which will be the initial profix for our approach today, uh, we will maintain 5,500 feet until we are at 16.8 miles when we start our descent with 3 degree path to a minimum of uh, 290 that we will select on our minimums on the PFD. And uh, 290. Two, 290 barrel and 290 on your side. Set on my side as well. Perfect. That will be the minimums today for the Cat 1 approach uh, in here. It's a couple of case, so it will be a nice approach. Uh, runway 08. For the miss approach procedure, what we've got is uh, that we should intercept the radial 078 uh, of Charlie Tango Fox, which is the uh, VOR in Catania, to index position, uh, climbing to 2,000 feet. So they go around altitude, miss approach altitude will be 2,000. Yes. Okay. There's a hold of our index, this is over the sea, at 16 miles from, uh, from Catania. The uh, airport elevation is 39 uh, feet, runway elevation 38, Papi, 3 degree path both sides of the runway, the runway is 2340 times 45, okay, and the elevation is, landing elevation 40, it's uh, rounded up. Uh, just a second, that, uh, yes. that start the descent, uh, okay. okay. Can you please ask the descent and, and do the descent? Climb flight level 240, Skokie Night End, Wallace 535. Volatea 1264, request descent. Volatea 1264, uh, descent to flight level 250. Sending level 250, Volatea 1264. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, so the uh, runway elevation is checked, 2300 over there. 2340 times 45, Papi 3 degree path, both sides of the runway. And uh, basically that's it for the uh, for the Alice approach. On progress page, what we see here is that we are going to land with 2,800 kilos, which means that uh, with the uh, alternate fuel requirement of 1.2 uh, tons plus one ton of the final time, 2.2, We've got approximately 80 minutes extra. Sign level 170, uh, 1264. 170, check. 170 sets. Continue. So, yes, so with the alternate and final uh, fuel required, the extra time is 600 kilos, 18 minutes. Uh, the landing weight will be 43.8 approximately, which is uh, well below our maximum landing weight today. Okay? Okay, uh, 1264, descending level 150, and contact Catania 119.25. 150, Catania 119.25, Lotea 1264. Catania Machorum, Lotea 1264, descending level 150, passing 230, inbound, Coba, Coba 1, Foxtrot. Volatea 1264, Catania Skokai, then. Volatea 1264, Catania Perla, left 120 to join the localizer, clear the ILS. Left 120 to join the localizer, clear the ILS, uh, Zulu 08, Volatea 1264. Heading 120, check. Volatea 1264, Catania left 110, clear the ILS. Left 110, clear ILS, Volatea 1264. 
Selected 230. Checked. Other clamp. Land arm. Charlie Tango November identified. Roger. Lock alive. Check. Lock line, circle line, slot. Please let me approach heading, please. Approach heading will be 078. Pre-select speed. Pre-select means approach altitude, 2,000 feet. Approach altitude, 2,000 feet. Pre-select. Yeah. Lotte 1264 established, ILS Zulu 0818 miles. Roger, tower 1187, bye. 1187, travel Lotte 1264. 006, trust. Tanya Tower, Buonasera, Blotia 1264, established um, Isla Zulu, runway 0816 miles. This is Cisco, Data Redra 1185. 1985, Chava, Data Redra 866. We confirm clear flight 08, wind 060 degrees 13 knots. Let's go with 168, confirm. FM, wind check 060 degrees 13 knots, Malta 1308. Malta 1308. Well, they want to see for continue your approach, wind 060 degrees 13 knots, uh, QNH 1017. Continue the approach, QNH 1017, Blotia 1264. Continue approach, check. Ecco la richiamo. So right now, just slightly to the right, we have Siganella Air Force Base. Clear down. Well, they want to see for wind 070 degrees 14 knots, running 0835. Running 08, uh, clear plan, Blotia 1264. Any light, please. Yeah, we're planning. Flaps 40. Speed checked. Pre-select uh, Miss Approach Speed to the average. Pre-select the Miss Approach Speed to 1-0. Pre-select it. Aye. 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 Buon giorno dalla Volare 43 kilo al 324 la messa in moto per uh, Milano di Nato. 43 kilo portati la Ground 1, 2, 9, 10, 9, 7, 2. 2, 9, 7, 2. 500 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Spoiler supplied. Reverse thrust available. Via Lima Tango, precaution in total turbulence di fio, allineamento attesa 08. Allineamento attesa 08, Lima Tango. Rotea 1264, vacate left Foxtrot, vacating yes. ground 12972. Left uh, Foxtrot, uh, ground 12975, chop. And taxi not. Check. Left on Foxtrot and ground 12975, chop, Rotea 164. Chop. In direzione di in finale 08, partenza breve in corso. Riportare in finale, c'è da cuore il circuito, ovviamente. Tanya ground bomb, bomberage of Lotea 12640, fake aid, fox. Oh, Lotea 1264, uh, taxi to the left on alpha and behind the meridian pushing back on the apron from stand uh, 332, taxi stand uh, 313. Roger via alpha, behind the meridian, stand 313, Lotea 1264. Confirm clear to start in number 2. Clear. Start in right engine. Oil press, fuel arm.
and one Out of flight? Out of flight. Check thrust. Thrust set. V1, VR. Positive rate. Gear up. Zero pitch left on take of plan six thousand. Altitude. Yes. We are approaching level uh, 120, let's say, 1708. 1708, descend 90. Descend 90, let's say, 1708. We are ending up doing the circling runway 10. This will be a captain's landing. Uh, for a moment, we have to maintain a little holding over Vara Point, which is not too far from the airport. The expected approach time is in about 1-5 minutes from now and then uh, we will continue out with, um, with uh, descent and we will be circling for uh, runway 10 so we will basically fly um, down to runway 28 and on short final make a left turn and fly a right base for runway 10 so this should be quite interesting and this is, uh, well, this is flying, this is very fun for us as it's uh, something different than the standard ILS Alitalia 12 for whiskey, let us win 110 degrees, 11 knots on the threshold 28, same wind on threshold 10, tower 18.6, ciao. 18.6, ciao, 12 for whiskey. So we are in IMC, but 14 degrees, so you don't need the engine anti ice. Just tell them that we are right up, so let's see if that helps us. Velocity 1708 is entering the holding at uh, VAR up 6000. Roger 178, uh, maintain the holding, uh, confirm uh, at the 2 3 uh, estimate approach time. Perfect, maintaining the holding, block 178. Check. Check. 
Altitude. That was to go. Okay, so monitoring the fuel, we still got uh, 300 kilos extra. So 300 kilograms gives us about how many minutes? Eight minutes. Can you make me a favor, please? Can you do me a favor? Uh, descend the 5,000 feet and continue on heading. 5,000 feet on the heading, we'll tell on some zero eight. Heading one, four, three, five thousand feet. Plan, insert the route to the altimeter to Milano, yeah. to Milano, yeah. and the secondary or the active? Roger, one seventy eight. If you don't need to increase the speed, you can uh, turn since now by the left uh, on heading three two zero. Yes, sir, we can maintain uh, two zero zero on the speed. Turning left, confirm three two zero. I do confirm, sir, three two zero. Okay, turning left, heading three two zero, Volotea. 1708, and we'll keep the speed on 206 knots in the air. It's okay. Not, uh, okay, 210 would be is okay, no, but not above 210. No, not above. Sorry, that. I will put X in a fix, okay? That's pretty good. We've got Berchi there. So Berchi is good. It will give us a. Uh, it will last for a direct Berchi for from a third time. Perfect. Golf Sierra, I could add fun my side as well. Perfect. Golf Sierra, I identify with this uh, intercept heading. We'll arm the approach. Land arm. Checked. Hold 4500. Check to maintain until 13.4 miles. Check. The wind is quite strong, we have about 30 knots tailwind here. Yep. Quite strong for this altitude. Yeah, well, at least no turbulence expected as the wind is coming from the sea, so that's good. Can you ask for the latest uh, wind on the ground, please? No, Blot Air 1708, uh, request latest wind from, uh, on the runway. Uh, you are now number one, latest wind on uh, Threshold 10, which is in use, 1108 knots, on the Threshold 28, which is available for landing, 120, 10 knots. Uh, copy, Blot Air 1708. It's tight, huh? Yeah, yeah we better see it. Uh, yeah. Lock. Uh, checked. And let's pre-select uh, 45 degrees to the left of the so space. 241. That will be 241. Yeah, you can select 240. Okay. 240 is pre-selected. Light slope. And uh, we Checked. will descend to 1,500, okay? 1,500. So 1,500 will level off. Established on the ILS Yankee 28, Lotte 1708. Roger, Lotte 1708, try for my from Golf Sharek. Tower on 118, Roger, Volotea 1708, uh, report uh, joining right downwind for runway 10. Call it back right downwind, Volotea 1708. You are for whisk, we don't have the gear down. System, uh, Speed check. Standing gear down. I put all the lights on, okay? Roger, okay, heading 240. Two number 1. 240, checked.
I will use track. Roger. Time now, please. Time check. Timing started. Okay, now I seem to be working. I don't know for Roger, we'll keep uh, flaps 18 for a time, it's a lot of power. Yes. Okay. Just give me 30 seconds and we'll go down with link. We get some tailwind here, so 25 seconds will be okay, okay? 25 seconds now. Okay, turning right, joining downwind. Okay, to right, joining uh, right downwind. Uh, correction, right downwind to runway 10. Quality 178, Roger, report on base. Call it back base. Okay, very good. Flap. Yes, we'll keep 18. Because we've got a lot of power now. So. Yeah. So we'll take time, flap 25. Roger. And then uh, we'll take uh, 45 seconds minus the wind, which will be 20 seconds to start turning, okay? Do you want to select the secondary? Yes, no, please. Okay, activate idea. secondary. Activate secondary. So Perfect, thank you very much. Tower Velo Tower 1733, request uh, SID inspected. Call me a beam the threshold and we'll take time, okay? Unita okay, flight plan is sequenced. Standard departure. Okay, check. Then uh, corner. 20 knots tail then. Unita okay, kilo. and we are uh, a beam threshold. Okay, time check please. Timing started. Flaps 25. Speed checked. Flaps 25. We'll keep the speed 160 for a time. Perfect. So with this wind, just tell me 25 seconds to start turning, okay? Roger. Start turn now. Polotea okay. 1708 is turning uh, right base, uh, runway 10. Volotea 1708, uh, Roger, runway 10, clear to land, wind 110 degrees, 10 knots. Clear to land, runway 10, Volotea 1708. Autopilot. 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 Three degrees. 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 Now to Spoilers. Flaps. It's uh, 40 degrees. 40 degrees, AD. Checked. Check. Before landing, checks complete. Clear to land. Miss approach prepared. Oh, thank you very much. Twenty knots head. Five hundred. Check. Checked. So we are stabilized. Engines pulled. Perfect. Hey. One hundred, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten, five. Spoiler deployed. Reverse thrust available. Eighty knots. Seventy knots. Check. Sixty knots. Check. Volte one seven zero eight on the ground at two seven. Vacate left via Foxtrot. Next left. Extend four zero five. 
via Foxtrot stand uh, 405, Lotea 1708. Lotea 1708, vacate left stand 405. Confirm 405 by Foxtrot, Lotea 1708. So 405 is uh, straight ahead initially. And it will be the um, last finger position to the right, so we maintain Perfect. to the right. Clear left side. Clear right side. Three check. After left. Left side in. Okay, speed, select. speed selected, okay? On 60 on 60. Gear down. Speed checked. And gear down. Put all the lights on, okay? Cabin crew, cabin okay, landing. Okay, heading 240.
Five is uh, straight ahead initially, and it will be the um, last finger position to the right, so we maintain right. to the right. Clear left side. Clear right side. After landing, clear left one possible. If you roll over. Yes, please. So straight ahead position four. Yeah, continue zero straight five. ahead four zero five. It's that finger to the right. Great, right, thank you. So after landing, spoilers. Free track, left slat, sitting extended, radar off, transport out of Flanix sea lights. Yeah. And if you don't open off Flanix checklist, complete. Clear right side and continue to right. Clear left side. Taxi lights off, please. Taxi lights coming off. This is 404. Continue, continue. It's the last finger, last finger. Yeah, yeah, it's very good, thank you. Nobody, nobody there, huh? They should be inside the uh, bridge. <laughs> okay. It's uh, with a docking system here. Yeah, I see. So for Entering the, the gate. Entering the gate. Stand by for engine cool. Yes, well, I hope you enjoy this uh, special approach. Uh, it is actually the first time we both uh, use this approach, which is uh, something that happens from time to time here in Genoa, when the wind is uh, a little bit high to go on the ILS approach runway 28. So uh, we prepared the visual approach and that's what we did. It was a very nice approach towards the mountains. Uh, so I'm very happy about it. Thank you.